I would first of all like to say thank you to the 100 black men for giving us the opportunity to partake in this essay competition. And then say a very big thank you to my host, Ma, for hosting me. I'm an HJ student from Ghana in West Africa. And she decided to, she volunteered to host me for a whole 10 months. And as I was living with her, she mentored me and showed me the love of her mother. And her way of life encouraged me to pursue greater heights in education. And I would like to say thank you to her. The biography of Shelley Chisholm. Shelley Anita Chisholm was born in Brooklyn, New York on November 30th, 1924, to a British father and a Barbados mother. She moved to live with her grandmother in 1927 in Barbados. In Barbados. Chisholm attended a girls' high school when she came back to Brooklyn in 1934. While there, she excelled in her academics and graduated from high school. She was awarded a scholarship to study in, at the Brooklyn College, graduating in 1942 with honors. She had difficulty in obtaining a job. Companies continued to turn her down, even with her qualification and good academic standards. After several disappointments, she was finally given a job at the Mount Calvary Center in Harlem and later as a director of school for early childhood education. Chisholm built her reputation working in the child care center and participating in community well-being activities. In 1949, she got married to Conrad Chisholm, a Jamaican who was a private investigator. Despite having a job and being married, she and her husband were into local politics and helped form the Bedford Stevenson Political League. She served on the board of directors of the Brooklyn home of aged colored people and also became an active member of the National Association for Advanced, Advanced Colored People. In addition to all this, she was a strong women's rights activist. She is a co-founder of the National Organization for Women. For women. Her forthrightness and willingness to confront politicians on racial issues made her popular among the white predominant Democrats, but earned her a lot of support from the people. Not only did she fight for blacks and women's rights, but she also started the Unity Democratic Club, which was influential in mobilizing black and Hispanic voters. In 1964, she spearheaded a campaign for the seat of the New York State Assembly on her own against the support and wishes of other Democrats. She won the election from 1964 to 1968, proposed a bill for states to aid daycare centers, she was also a co-founder of the Search for Elevation, Education, and Knowledge. It was, it was passed in 1964 and sought to reach out to students who lacked the necessi necessary academic and financial requirements to be in colleges and universities by providing them with remedial classes and scholarships. In 1968, Shelley Chisholm became the first black woman to go to Congress and attain such a high position in government. In 1970, she was elected to her second term in office. Her outgoing nature, but brave and intelligent attitude made her a sought-after public seeker. Later, in January 25, 1972, she announced her candidacy for presidency, but she lost to George S. McGovern. Nevertheless, the loss of presidential election did not stop her. She won the congressional election and returned to the House. She served in the House over seven years and was the only woman on the House of Rules Committee. Chisholm announced her retirement in, on February 10, 1982. She spent the rest of her years teaching political science and women's studies in Mount Koyoki, the oldest women's college in the United States, and giving speeches and addresses on vital issues. Being the first girl of my family, who are from Ghana, and for that matter, having to play the part of a role model to my younger mm -hmm. siblings, Shelley Chisholm is a great motivation for me as well. Not only has this woman encouraged me to pursue greater heights in college, challenging me to pursue medicine, but also to motivate girls my age to do the same. She has shown that nothing good comes easy. Courage, endurance, confidence, humility, and intelligence are needed to achieve all the good and essential things in life. No matter a person's background, provided he or she is determined and ready to change the lives of others, they can make it. 
the rally for presidency has brought me to the realization that women, and for that matter, I in particular, can be the head of great institutions. She may have lost the election, but the fact that she tried gives her credit for an enormous amount of bravery. I have also come to the realization that I have to boost the level of my confidence to another stage. Wanting to be a leader comes with hard work, and I'm ready to take the chance to learn to address people in public with a firm but respectful approach. Considering the fact that she was able to talk to government officials on the issue of race without fear came with confidence, knowing clearly well that she was doing the right thing. Secondly, I learned that any time a person does well, it affects not only themselves, but the community as a whole. Chisholm started by concentrating on her education and gradually, and gradually her life influenced others. My desire to help the society, especially my people back at home, just jolted to the skies. Considering my country is a developing one and will need a lot of help to become self-reliant. My participation in community service with the Community Women Against Hardship Center, like serving food and presenting gifts during Christmas, and also serving as a guide at the Powell Symphony Hall during the Martin Luther King Day, has given me satisfaction, knowing that just a portion of my time might have changed the lives of others. Furthermore, knowing that she specifically helped children in an immense way and understanding that children are the leaders of the next generation, I have developed the desire to support them when I am finally independent and self-reliant. Children are the future and building a good foundation for them will go a long way to help them in the society. I could go on and on about Ch Shirley Chisholm. She is a great inspiration to women all over the world. For the first time ever, the legislative and judicial arms of government in Ghana are headed by women, a true work of inspiration. What's more, for the first time ever, an African country, Liberia, has a woman, a woman as its president. Shelly Chisholm has motivated my interest to help the society and try for the best, provided it is the right thing. Her resilience and need, and need to fight for women's rights made her who she is. A legacy. Thank you. All right. Let's give this a good